perfect. So I just wanted to make sure we had it up in case questions came through there that we could see those as well. It's a little delayed though, which is fine that it's delayed. Ladies, this is so exciting. I'm so glad we're doing this. I hope people pop in and visit us. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> They will. If they don't, they it's okay, right? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. It's just socialization, period. Oh, John's <laughs> here. Hi, John. How are you? John, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you guys see that he's on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, I see some. I see John. Yeah. So I have tea, but oh, uh, but I also have some bubbles, which just disappeared right there in my virtual. It's <laughs> 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 <They're> magic bubbles. <laughs> it's your virtual kitchen. Always, hey, hey Leah. Leah. You. <laughs> I haven't seen you in forever. You're muted. You can unmute. Can you unmute? I think I can. Oh, there you there are. There she is. <laughs> hey, how have you been? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. We're doing good. So exciting. Yeah. You know, she just got her uh, master's degree, right? Very yeah, cool. Back in December, yes. Very cool. That is fantastic. I'm just uh, so much work, and with especially with kids at home, it's crazy. Yeah. So if you see this door fly open, that's what you will see. <laughs> that's why I'm in my virtual kit. Look, my hand. There they are. They're in my hands. I'm in my virtual kitchen. This is my. Oh. <laughs> Not much going on out there. <laughs> I took a picture of my kitchen and uploaded it. So that's my real kitchen. Oh, that's funny. Just in my bedroom. That's all. <laughs> can, can I just say, Dee Dee, I'm looking at your stove behind you. I definitely have stove envy. Oh, you do? I'm looking, I'm going, ooh. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Yours are funny. General Electric. Very, very <laughs> inexpensive. <I promise. laughs> when we bought this, when I bought this house, I bought it as a flip. So my intent was to, you know, we gutted it, we redid everything, and we were going to flip it. Well, it turned out to be in the perfect school zone, the perfect neighborhood, the, and so we did it. So I, I went cheap on a lot of things in the beginning because we were going to flip it, and then when we decided to live here, then we went a little more high end. Sadly, the kitchen stuff was all purchased before those decisions were made. It looks great. But it's like, yeah, it looks great, <laughs> but it's uh, you know. <laughs> The low end cabinets, the low, you know, it's, it's fine, but it's quartz countertop, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, so we have two visitors, Leah. And Leah, do you know everybody here, Leah? Uh, I don't know Martha or John. Okay, I don't know John either. Yeah, who is John? John, who are you? I'm still, I'm still discovering myself, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Caroline's here. Oh. Hey, foodie. Hi, Caroline. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll introduce ourselves because most of us kind of know each other. Oh, he said he's still. Uh, I work closely with Martha uh, okay. because uh, that's my sister, and I, I do a little bit of uh, this and that sort of things for her. So I kind of work for Martha, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm an individual that is very interested in uh, food allergies because obviously my niece and Martha and uh, my nephews all have food allergies. Oh. Fortunately, that's one. Uh, those are allergies I don't have. However, the challenge is cooking for them whenever they come over. So I've got to make sure, doubly sure, that I'm not having any cross contamination. So that's my challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, I only have seasonal allergies, actually, allergies all, all year. I've got to take allergy medication. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, I can eat most anything. So I'm lucky from that standpoint. So I'm basically here to learn. Okay, awesome. I think Caroline just popped out. She's struggling with her um, video, but Joey just popped in. So let's do this. Before we start getting everybody talking, um, Tracy, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody, let them know a little bit about you, and then we'll just kind of run the gamut and get our introductions. Okay, sounds good. So um, I'm Tracy Bush, also known as Nutramom. Um, my son is 18 now, but he's the reason that I basically started doing what I was doing. I started as a small food allergy blog, and it kind of blossomed into product reviews, working with different um, allergy-friendly products, attending events and expos, working with some really great organizations, recipe creation. I have an ebook. Um, I just, I, I love helping people. So if I can say yes to something and help one person, that's what I do. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And I, I met Tracy at an expo in, um, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. 
and had been following her and so was really super excited to, to meet her face to face and she is just as wonderful and generous and giving in person as she is in her blood. <laughs> love, love, love. And I got to meet Martha in Chicago last year at the Faces Conference, Food Allergy, Food Allergy Conference for Science and Education. <laughs> that's, yes. that's what and so it was great getting to know her. So uh, Martha, Chef Martha, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody too. Okay, hi, yeah, um, I'm a chef, I'm also a mom, and of course that's what introduced me to this lifestyle in the beginning. Um, I didn't realize I had celiac disease, I didn't realize all the food allergies in my family, till Kara, the, who is now getting ready to turn 18 in October, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, I don't know which one on that one, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, she was nine months old when she presented with her first anaphylactic reaction as far as food. She has total of 33 food allergies, and um, she's been a challenge since day one, um, in a good way, predominantly. Um, so that's what I do. I run a restaurant, I mean, I've been in restaurants, but for the past six years, I've been in a hospital kitchen setting, and I started a YouTube channel, and um, just trying to help and pay it forward and, you know, get ready for the kids not being in the house all the time and that type yeah. of thing. So just helping people, and I do consult, uh, consulting for companies and different things like that for recipes and, and even individuals as well. Awesome. Okay, um, are we normal people now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sure, anyway. anyway. So we'll just keep an eye, and I tried to, I muted everybody who was making noise. I tried to, anyway. <laughs> okay. And then I threw them out of the room, and they, they can't get back in. Caroline, wasn't that a fun way to enter our, our club? I, I wonder, I first thought, where, what did they just do? <laughs> Zoom, like, like, Zoom kicked me out. And then I thought, okay, and I get back in, and there's all this cussing. I thought, wow, Zoom's pissed at me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I hit the wrong did... button. I, <laughs> I was like, where did I go? <laughs> Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. <laughs> oh That's my right. gosh. Well, I'm so glad you guys stayed. <laughs> Great way to enter in. I know. At least we're all friends here. So we, can, we, know, we know how to uh, stop all that in the future. So, yeah, no more screen sharing. Everybody muted unless I unmute them. Or the host unmutes them. <laughs> and these little boys who have way too much time on their hands. Hopefully, they'll find something else to entertain themselves. So, Dee Dee, I wanted to mention well, A, I would love to have your magical bubbles right now because that's definitely something that we need <laughs> but also She's in a magical bubble she says so they disappear if i go too fast <laughs> but also um I to mention joey joey has a food allergy app so i'm really glad that he's, ah. he's here with us today yeah so joey tell us about yourself and then we'll start talking some food all right so um yeah my name is joey deganji i uh, i have a peanut tree and allergy my whole life and uh, starting a couple years ago when I was a junior in college, I started, I, I wanted to uh, create a software company to help people with food allergies. And so we've been building out a, uh, an application that is designed to help people during the allergic reaction, uh, get the help that they need, uh, help them remember to bring their, their EpiPen or AviQ with them. And then trying to just bring in as many other like, just like good resources in the food allergy community. Like Tracy posts her blogs on our, on our app and it's in there. Uh, so it's really just trying to create like a community feel inside the app as well. And that's been pretty exciting lately. We, uh, we partnered with a big software developer who's helping us kind of like do a more advanced version of everything that should that actually be going into final testing uh, this week. So it's been, it's been a really cool period. That's really exciting, Joey. That's awesome. So what are you doing now? Uh, so I am employed by the company that invested in in a short tech my company okay so i'm kind of like full-time uh member of that team and full-time entrepreneur so it's a it's a cool mix yeah i'm familiar with your company because of tracy so, oh perfect yeah so that's awesome that's great um so leah tell us a little bit about you um so first and foremost i'm a mom because my kids get mad if i say i'm the founder or an entrepreneur <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'm a mom to a 10 and eight year old. And so my now 10 year old had, when he was six months old, he was diagnosed with 13 different anaphylactic allergies. Um, we're down to eight food, but he's also anaphylactically allergic to penicillin 
um, and latex. He's also allergic to dogs, cats, and goats. He's had an anaphylactic reaction at a petting zoo when he was just, he just touched a goat when he was four. Um, so he's pretty highly sensitive. He's got EOE and asthma. He recently was diagnosed with a neurological condition affecting the way he swallows. Um, so we've sort of run the gamut, um, but I am the founder of the Food Allergy Institute and our focus is on helping families and schools manage the psychological impact. As Didi mentioned, I finished my master's in December in child and adolescent psychology. And my goal is to really help families and schools be not where I was five years ago. I was just like stressed out. You know, I was an executive at a large company and I was trying to manage having two small kids and a nanny and making sure everyone was safe and happy and included. And I was living on okay. wine and coffee and well, started with coffee. <laughs> Um, and just really stressed out. And just one day my son, I got a call that he was in an ambulance at the time we were in Houston and he was headed to Texas Children's in anaphylactics. And I just walked out and my colleague said, oh, another mom vacation. And so I was like, what? You no. Know, so three days later I came back after my son had been in the ICU and you know, trying to manage everything. And I like had my computer and I was like, what am I doing? And I quit. And that's when I went back to school because there wasn't, there literally was no one to help me. No one could say how to do this mm -hmm. without having a nervous breakdown, which I probably had already had. And so that's why I went back to school to learn how to do this. And I worked for FAIR for a number of years before starting my company last year and trying to, you know, launch and help people. So that's sort of my long, short story. <laughs> That's a great story, Leah, and I'm just, I'm so happy to know you. Leah and I have not met in person. Um, Caroline. No, actually, that's true. We haven't. We haven't, but one of these days, we're going to end up at the same conference at the same time. <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll all be at Contain Courage this fall. Yes, maybe. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. So, Michael, thanks for joining us today. we got to unmute you. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi. I've actually been just going around and stopping people from raiding Zooms. Oh, so you're here on business have, reasons. <laughs> yeah, I've just been um, yeah, mentioning people that go on Zooms, like I've just been patrolling, but usually I leave after, but I just got very interested in what you were talking about. Oh, that's... <laughs> so well, was, good. It's the bubbles, isn't it? It's the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> and the disappearing hands. <laughs> How do you cook like that? <laughs> I have my Harry Potter invisible cloak that I can. Yeah. <laughs> well, Michael, thanks for patrolling and, and helping us keep this a lot cleaner than it was just. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? I love your accent. Oh, uh, New Zealand. Okay. I've been to cool. New Zealand. Where in New Zealand? Uh, Rotorua. Oh, that's beautiful. We went to the where the, all the little springy things smelly sulfury yep. sulfur. uh the geysers yeah, yeah the geysers that's what they are <laughs> <laughs> the bubbles, <laughs> the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> no but thank you again for being here truly appreciate it yep all right caroline it's your turn There we go. I'm unmuted. Sorry, it was late. It's been one of those like mornings. I, I bought a camera to put on my desktop and I thought I had it all worked out, but apparently not. So now I'm on my iPad. Uh, but anyway, so I have the Grateful Foodie blog and I'm just getting ready to update the theme because it's like really old. Um, and I <laughs> contribute to Allergic Living Magazine. Mm -hmm. So I used to do the product reviews and was a product editor, but now that they've gone digital, I just do more... Um, contributing to certain stories and so forth and now I'm helping fact with their podcast so I'm learning how to host their podcast and do blogs and so that's been really interesting learning how to edit podcasts so if anyone has any tips send them my way well oh, really it's like oh, yes. yes all right Leah I'm gonna now we have a collaboration going already that's yes awesome. I mean I am, am all ears but my background is I have two children with food allergies uh, they're young adults now my son's 21 and my daughter's 16 and we have asthma as well and so we've been doing this for 19 years wow. so it's pretty amazing to me to think way back when we started where the only way to get information was face to face 
I mean, literally the most information I ever received is I was trying to find a preschool for my son and one of the preschools that I called said, hey, look, there's a mom here who knows a lot about food allergies and she gave the woman my number and then we met and she showed up with a fan binder. So I don't know if anyone's old enough to know oh, wow. fan had this binder like this big with data and she met me at a coffee shop. So we've come a real long way, but my background is actually the hospitality industry. So food service and hotels. So I'm hoping now that my kids are older, I can get back into that industry, but mm -hmm. focusing on special diets and food allergies. So yeah, I'm hoping to head. You know, you will, you know, you will. And you've got Tracy Suckworth who you can consult with anytime. Y'all are good. Friends anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tracy's a bomb. She's awesome. I really <laughs> like her. I do. And my background is education. So I was a teacher and an assistant principal and had a lot of kids with special therapy needs, celiac disease, all of that. My children both had egg and dairy allergies when they were little. Um, fortunately, they did outgrow them. They could always do baked egg, but they couldn't do like just regular cooking. Um, and now they're fine. My oldest one still struggles with gluten issues and I struggle with gluten issues, not as severe as Martha but um, they, they'll knock us out for a couple days if we're not careful. Um, and I was the director of education and training for Allertrain. So I did a lot of allergy training in, in the hospitality industry and universities and schools and that kind of thing. And now I'm focus, focusing more on schools and businesses and my own business, allergy, and blogging and cooking and just having fun. We have food. Did you guys bring food? Everybody bring food? I did, I did. <laughs> 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 if it's a, the first thing I have is this, I'll put the links in the blog, but I got, you know what, somebody else go first because I need to pull up my links. We got so sidetracked with that craziness earlier that I didn't pull up my links for the food to credit the bloggers. So if somebody else wants to go first while I do that, I really appreciate it. Do you want, Martha, you want to go first? You want me to go I don't first? Care. I'll go first. I'm okay. done with it. Okay. Okay, I have got, um, this is actually from My Allergy Kitchen, and what? Put it up higher? Okay. <laughs> Nobody can see it. I'm getting directed by Kara. She's hiding though. She's like, Mom, you're not doing a good job. Uh, okay, so this is from My Allergy Kitchen, and it is actually a uh, sweet potato, turkey, and apple hash. And I put, oh, and I'm going to throw food on the floor. <laughs> But uh, my allergy kitchen is Zoe, and it's actually a UK blog, so I had to adjust a few things with it, but it's really, really good. Um, I had to add some extra salt and pepper to it, but I've already ate some of it, obviously, because I couldn't wait, so I got all mine. And I put more turkey in it just because we're not using it as a traditional hash and putting eggs and that kind of thing. So I like one, top, one pot meals. It has apples in it, too, and I know a little bit more not necessarily as seasonal as it, what you would think of right now, but we're used to coconut base like for the oil is what you cooked it in so it has a rural light coconut flavor if you can't do coconut oil you could always do avocado oil or something some other oil that you can use but it's dairy free and all eight major allergen friendly so except for the coconut oil and then I also did dessert so I'll show dessert real quick since we haven't ate yet and then this is you may know who this recipe is from it's Carolyn's recipe oh. yeah <laughs> Um, and it's like a key lime uh, rice crispy treat, basically type of treat. I use Chex Mix, and instead of using like the lime marshmallows that she did, because we have like I can't do a lot of um, the food colorings and that kind of thing, I actually use lime zest, and I used a little bit of uh, lemon juice in there with uh, a lemon flavoring. Um, not lemon lime. Lime is what I use, not lemon, or it wouldn't be you know key lime pie type of thing. So with coconut. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be around somewhere at some point. I have those. <laughs> that sounds right. awesome. Can I ask a recipe kind of question? Please. Yeah. Can I oh, okay, so I was looking, it's all over the news that Double Tree, you know, released the recipe for their famous cookie that they give out. And they have lemon juice in that recipe. So it's like an equal amount of cane sugar, brown sugar, a little extra vanilla to me, um, you know, flour, eggs, butter, which obviously we would use the substitution on the dairy, you know, and the egg part, but then it had a quarter of a teaspoon lemon. What's up with the lemon? 
I, I just, use lemon juice in my baking, like my regular baking. Actually, I should try it in my allergy-free really? baking. It activates the, I want to say baking powder, baking soda, one of them, the one that makes it rise. The it baking activates soda and the baking powder, it, it would do with both, but the baking soda, it's more instantaneous. You can also do the same thing with, if you can't do lemon, you can do like cider vinegar or vinegar. Helps, it's just chemical reaction is what it does. I use that in my gluten-free pancakes to make oh, them poopy. Really? So I never knew this till now? Oh my <laughs> God. Like, Learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful okay, thank you. I'm feeling better now. This is good. It's a good day. Very cool. All right, Tracy, you go. Okay. So in honor of having you guys invite me on the show, I decided to try one of your recipes each. So... <clears throat> Martha, I tried your gluten-free vegan banana bread cookies. Can you see? Oh, yes. they look beautiful. Okay. Ooh, ah. So <laughs> I made these two days ago, and they are still awesome. I know a lot of times with allergy-friendly products, like a day or two goes by, and the cookies kind of get either hard or too crunchy or even like too mushy. These are still really, really good. I'm really enjoying them. They're like a really hearty cookie, almost like a, um, I don't want to say like a granola bar because that's too much, but it's a really hearty cookie. Like I have tea with me right now because that's, that's my whole like tea in a cookie. <laughs> and there's eight ingredients. So they're really simple to make and I was very happy with them. So the next thing I tried, Dee Dee, was your easy mac and cheese muffins. <laughs> Hard to tell on the screen, but these were also super easy, eight ingredients. Um, they do contain egg, but I'm pretty sure because you cook them in the, the um, muffin tins in a baking cup, that if you needed to omit the egg and use egg replacer, I'm sure they would stay just as fine and they are delicious. Nutra daughter loved them too, so. <laughs> the win. <laughs> well, I reviewed recipes. I'm sorry, I didn't re re review y'all's. I, I feel kind of guilty about that now. But I have made your stuff and I've made your pancakes and I've made your sun butter cookies and I love them. So I have done them in the past. Mm -hmm. This one I did, this, this is, um, I'm looking at my notes because I just sent you guys the links. Um, this one's from Cybel Pastel and I put the links in the um, comments. So this is just her, it's a, a, a fabulous salad with roasted corn, avocado and red bell peppers and a lovely little sauce, completely free of the top eight allergens. If you have a corn allergy, just leave out the corn and just do avocado and peppers. It, it won't be the same, but it will still be okay. And we had a lot of fun grilling and charring the corn on the grill. I sent my husband out to do that. So that was nice of him to do that. And then for the main course, I did these Thai tacos from Simply Gluten Free. Aren't those pretty? Wait, they're, they're disappearing. Real pretty. What? They're disappearing. <laughs> It's the magical kitchen, um, <laughs> but they're really good. And she uses a sun butter based sauce um, to make it you know, peanutty without the peanut. I did not use tamari in mine. Her recipe calls for tamari, but because it has soy, I substituted with the coconut aminos. Hey, it is so funny how things disappear here. Um, coconut <laughs> aminos. Um, and I used hemp parts instead of sesame seeds on top. But it's really cool because the relish on top just red onions and serrano peppers and you marinate it for a minimum of 15 minutes. I marinate mine for about an hour and red wine vinegar and grenadine. And it gives us this saucy tangy like little flavor and it kind of cuts the sweetness of the sun butter. For me, it's a, that is a really thick sun butter sauce. So next time I make it, I'll probably put more of the other two ingredients, the um, sweet wine, the rice wine and um, what else? Uh, and the, coconut aminos, that kind of thing, a little sweet chili sauce, and a little bit less of the sun butter because it's just a little too thick for me, but the flavor is awesome. I really, really did enjoy it. And then I made dessert. I made these one bowl carrot cake cookies by Allergy Licious and um, the, the gluten-free, allergen-free frosting that we made. Um, and they are delicious and they are moist and they are fabulous and everyone in my house loved them. My oldest daughter loved them and she doesn't like carrot cake at all. And she really likes these. So it's, you don't even, the texture of the carrots just kind of disintegrates in there and it just gives it that sweet, yummy flavor and free of the top eight applesauce instead of eggs. It's... 
It was so good. Okay, so I'm ready to eat. You guys ready to eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want to share? Because I'm going to eat while you talk now. <laughs> I had a question, Didi. Yes, ma'am. Um, the I think it was the tacos that you made that had the sun butter in it. Did it call for a specific type of sun butter? Because sun butter has several different products. And I know like in our household, even between my daughter and myself, my daughter prefers the creamy and I prefer the no sugar added. Just different tastes right. and things. It didn't. It just said general sun butter. Um, I think the crunchy would be great because I do like a little crunch. Um, mm -hmm. I had shredded the carrots for the carrot cake muffins. Mm -hmm. So I had the shredded carrots out on the countertop and my husband decided that they needed to be on the tacos. So he put the shredded carrots on his tacos and really likes this. <laughs> so it's good that we could be versatile with it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have, um, I, with the muffins, I did not, I was out of the, oh, you guys, this is such a pet peeve. I'm really annoyed about this. I was out of my Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one measure. So I went to the store to get more. No gluten-free baking flour. I probably bought it. Zero. I was like, are you kidding me? There's none. So I did have, we love him, right? We love Hungry Harry. So oh. I did have Hungry Harry's in the house. I had a couple bags of his all-purpose flour. And I didn't know if it was one-to-one -one because it doesn't say. So I just used it and it worked perfectly fine. So yay, Hungry Harry saved the day. I forgot to mention that. Um, that is actually what I used in oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the cookie mix. <laughs> so Hungry Harry's, we like you too. <laughs> I just happened to have a candy. Um, Bob Red Mills because I'm working on a story with a reporter about like the shortage and people with Diet, you know, diet restrictions and having trouble finding their food. Mm -hmm. Red Mills has such a run on their allergy-friendly, their gluten-free foods. They've up production 27% in the last month, and they still can't catch up. Oh wow! They're hoping to get stuff back on the shelves by the end of the month, but you know, people are home and they're stressed. And like, I mean, I know I've had more baking in the last like month than I have probably in the last six months. Yeah. But, I didn't know, realize like, how addicted we were to eating out and getting takeout until this day. Yeah. <laughs> and the takeout oh, is yeah, people found, like my live story, as you can see, like I tried to make a carrot souffle, an allergy friendly <laughs> carrot souffle. Because <laughs> our CSA brought us carrots that were no kidding. Like, that big. <laughs> and, you know, you needed flour and eggs, which we can't eat. So I did the one-to-one, -one. I, I still had some Bob Red Mills and the egg substitute, I used applesauce and um, lemon juice and um, uh, baking powder. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so lemon juice. <laughs> lemon juice. <laughs> lemon juice. Or vinegar. I do, I do vinegar a lot. I do the apple cider vinegar. Um, you can do that too. I, yeah. It sort of depends on what you have on hand, but yep. it actually did <laughs> really good, but it didn't souffle. No. <laughs> As my kids said, it, it looked like it was alive. Okay, Nutra daughter's getting one of the last uh, mac and cheese muffins here. <laughs> She's hiding. She, she doesn't want to. Grateful Foodie is here. Say hi to Grateful Foodie. Just say hi. hi. Get in here. Oh, <laughs> Nutra daughter, there she is. Nutra yeah, daughter is way too. cool. <laughs> my kids were like, they're like, um, when are you starting? Do we have time to cook? And I'm like, I'm going to the bedroom. They're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Just not about it at all. <laughs> not about it at all. Caroline, do you have any wonderful tips for us? Anything you want to share? I'm still like all over this lemon juice thing. <laughs> <laughs> How am I the last human to learn this? Like, everyone has it. Um, actually, what we've been doing, uh, we're baking a lot so we can have wheat. And so we're starting to do a lot more bread baking now. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so that's been really interesting getting ready to start with sourdough and my son's been like going focaccia crazy. So that's been really good. But what I've been doing with uh, muffins is having like a base muffin. So I have this real simple one bowl banana muffin recipe. Mm -hmm. And so what I've been doing since everyone's home now, so my son's home from college and you know, hubby and daughter. And so what I do now is I'll take the first few muffins and they'll be just banana. Then the second batch, I'll ask my husband, well, what do you want in your banana muffin? And if it's blueberries, then I'll add, you know, take some batter and add some blueberries. And then what do the kids want? And so chocolate chips. So I've been taking one recipe and then adding little variations to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even did it with a sheet cake where I dropped white chocolate chips on one half and just, 
I thought just to make it look a little, you know, mm -hmm. a little zippy. <laughs> but, but we're mostly in bread land. Like I used to make bread all the time and then we stopped. Yeah, we did too when I was before kids. And then once the kids- Yeah, before kids, right? <laughs> yeah, it just got to be too great. And it's so fun to make. You would think I would have made it more, but- I, like, I used to make puff pastry. <laughs> like, I've only done that once. That's brave. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work. So now we're trying to get back into that, but I made a, a error. So I ordered directly from Central Milling or Central Mill, and I don't know, I think they're in Utah, because they just couldn't get flour here. And I was like, oh, I used to buy those big bags. And I was thinking the bag I used to buy was a 50 pound bag, but no, the 50 pound bag just arrived. I used to buy the 30 pound. Oh, so, no. you know, I a load of flour. So yeah, I was out yesterday delivering <laughs> to some friends. <laughs> My neighbor accidentally ordered a 100 pound bag of flour. She thought like regular like baking flour. She thought she put in one, but she had her she has like an almost two year old on her lap. So she must have either oh, baby no. it or she had, and you know, she has three kids under ten. So she was just sleep deprived and you know, and so arriving on her front porch was this case. Oh. <laughs> She's like, I needed a oh. one pound. <laughs> And then oh she no! Receipt. She's like, "Well, that's expensive." <laughs> Anyone need this water? <laughs> that's hysterical. I know. I had to go to the restaurant supply yesterday to get some big buckets because <laughs> I have one big. I have a eighteen yeah. quart that I usually keep my flour in because we really do go through it like crazy. But I had to go get some new buckets. <laughs> But you know what? They had a lot of gluten-free flour there, 50-pound and 100-pound bags. Well, next time, I'll just buy a big old bag. <laughs> That's just terrible. I've never bought that much flour in all my life, ever. Me No. I don't know what we, I would eat today. I don't have room for my regular food. That, see this kitchen back here? It's small. <laughs> Mine, too. You get creative with your space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, see now. Now here's a here's a design tip. So we have a we have a you know pretty tiny house, and so when we remodeled and we added you know some rooms, um, I still had to figure out what to do with the kitchen. And a friend of mine's an architect, and what she did is she had me go for a smaller kitchen, but a walk-in pantry. Mm. And so this is her design tip on everything: is make your rooms smaller so you don't buy furniture to hold your stuff or cabinets, because it's expensive. Instead, have these walk-in closets, walk-in pantries. And so I actually don't even have cabinets in, in wow. my house. I have no upper cabinets at all. Wow. I just have this walk-in pantry. And that I love my good. pantry. Which is a yeah. short, as a short person, it works. <laughs> there are no step ladders involved in my life. They are gone. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am vertically challenged, so I totally feel that as well. <laughs> But we keep a bucket of like rice around and I have it like on the bottom of, we have about buckets of stuff because we do have to do so much scratch cooking for Kara. Um, garlic is one of the things she's anaphylactic to. So like spices, so pre-made things, a lot of things are just out the window. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of bulk food already. So in a way with this already being the way it is, we have, you know, she's used to baking and that kind of thing. Thankfully she's gotten older and learned as she goes. So it's like, this is what I'm making this week. Oh good. I don't have to worry about it. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're making lasagna. She's down here and she won't come on camera, but she's, she's watching and listening and editing. Tell me. her we said hi. There she is. <laughs> hi, she I want to see your cute hair. Wait, tell her I got to see her hair. Yeah. You should. Yeah. Nutri daughter just had her hair done too. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for my new dye to come in. <laughs> nice. You have my your mom's hair. It hers red, bright red with like dark, dark purple underneath. That's how bored we are. We're just changing colors. <laughs> <laughs> you guys notice my kids were still in their pajamas. Oh, I didn't even see them. <laughs> yeah, they snuck in asking me lunch, which they literally just ate. <laughs> Listen, I'm a pajama lover, Leah. I'm a fan of pajamas. I would wear pajamas to the grocery store if I could get away with it. My kids too. But you know, it's kind of chilly post tornado day here in Atlanta. So I'm like, whatever, wear your pajamas. Tracy too. Oh, you had tornadoes last night, didn't you? Yeah, it was bad. We were, our 
our neighborhood is fine, but a couple over is not so good. And it's just mm. like wet and there are some trees down. And I was like, no, you can stay inside. It's like, it's cold in Atlanta. It's 60. <laughs> it's snowing here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So much well, I think I would take, Easter. <laughs> I think I would take snow over tornadoes personally. Oh, but. absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, they're gone now, so, and it's going to be yeah. in the 80s tomorrow, so. It was a creepy night, though. It definitely was a creepy night. Yeah. Where are you located, Tracy? North Carolina. We had, um, it wasn't too bad until, like, four in the morning. When I woke up, and I heard some of the thunder and some of the wind, so I popped on um, local news station radar. It was just red, and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is not good, <laughs> but luckily, I mean, we had a lot of tornadoes around us. Luckily, our area was was fine, but it was still creepy. I mean, the wind was was gone, and no trees down on you know on our property. Knock on wood, but it was still not how I wanted to wake up today. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I think I woke up at like two a.m. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, and we weren't quite as bad as Tennessee or anything like that surrounding us, but it definitely hit us pretty hard too. So, mm. but luckily, we're all good. Oh, you guys, my Whole Foods order has shipped. That means it's going to be here in about 20 minutes. So I will probably leave you as soon as somebody knocks on my door and get my food. Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've failed at social distancing. I've gone to the grocery store almost every single day because it's like my big field trip. It's like I get to get out of the house and go to the grocery store. It's very exciting. And the, uh, the trolling for toilet paper is like the highlight of the day. So if there's toilet paper, we're like, ooh, toilet paper, we buy one every time, which is very rare. Because there's never toilet paper. It's super exciting. But we can't go to the grocery store today because we have to go to Denver. My husband's buying a truck. So we're running up there to get the truck. So the food's being delivered. I'm jealous. I haven't left here since March 13th, except for like to go hiking in the woods around us. But I haven't been to a store or anything since March 13th. Wow. Wow, that's you're a better impressive. woman than I. <laughs> Well, my son has fluid in his lungs, so we have to be. Oh, you have to be extra, extra careful. Yeah. So yeah, but no, I miss humans. <laughs> Remember the people that were, you know, on here earlier. <laughs> <laughs> talking to strangers, I miss talking to strangers. I didn't realize that was a thing until now. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, definitely miss, like, you, yeah. Miss talking to strangers. I see we've closed the hospital down. I work at the hospital during the day. And um, so that's pretty much all I've been doing is going to work and then coming back home. I don't go out shopping or anything because I am immunocompromised as well with having RA and the celiac disease. So, uh, but we wear a mask 24, the whole time you're at hospital and, and that kind of thing. So it can be scary. We're not one of the harder hit hospitals, but it's definitely interesting uh, time to be working. And that was like, I always thought of myself as an essential worker, but never really thought of it. Oh, you know, if something happens like this and I'm in the hospital. Mm -hmm. you have a higher chance of being exposed and I was like oh yeah I forgot about all that when I decided to sign up for it I just thought of helping people <laughs> and then it was like oh okay yeah it's it's a whole it's a whole new world I'll tell you I think it's brought our community closer together in Colorado Colorado northern Colorado is very interesting people are really friendly here like everybody's so nice and they're so polite but they won't invite you in for coffee mm. South Florida People will run you over on the road and cut you in line at the grocery store and have you over for happy hour every single day. So like it's, Jersey. it's really <laughs> interesting. So, you know, I don't have a lot of close friends here because I've lived most of my life in South Florida and now I'm here. But since this has happened, our neighbors, well, you know, we're all across the street from each other and everybody has their map, but everybody waves and they say hello because I think too, everybody's starving for human interaction. So we're like, when this is over, we're going to have a great big party. We're going to have everybody over. And, so I'm getting to know my neighbors better now than in the last three years that I've lived here, which is really interesting. <laughs> it's nice. It is, it is, but it's, it's just watching the shifts, you know, and in my mother's neighborhood is like the opposite. And she's in Naples, Florida, where everybody used to be really friendly and they're older. Um, and now everybody's just, don't talk to me, don't look at me, you might have a problem. Yeah. It's interesting regionally how it's affecting, I think, people socially. My parents are struggling. They live in Amelia Island, Florida, which is oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and like half the population is not doing any social distancing. They're out at the golf course and the country club is 
doing only like takeaway restaurants. So my dad and a bunch of his friends are still like doing golf normally. And instead of sitting around the country club and like having lunch and drinks, they're like sitting on the sidewalk drinking. And he's like, they have nothing changed. And they are, you know, are like, come on, you'll be fine. And he's like, no, I have an immune compromised son. And my daughter yelled at me and she won't let me see him if I don't you know, isolate. And, and he's like, it's either you're completely isolated or you're pretending nothing's going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I think is funny? Um, and I don't know about you guys. I know Carolyn has posted this. I was actually yelling at my parents for, for, for not paying attention. I mean, not that they went out so much, but I've limited my time to, you know, I go to the food store and to the drive up pharmacy. That's it. And the food store I've limited like once a week now. And here my parents are going to like Home Depot and they're going to Dollar General. And I'm like, you know, you're not supposed to be going out. Right. And she's like, well, you know, we need things. I'm like, do you really need to go to the dollar store for the one thing right now? <laughs> Stay home. So now she's paranoid. Now it's flipped and she's paranoid. And she's like waking up and she's like, oh my God, I'm coughing. Do I have it? Can I smell things? Can I, you know, <laughs> but it's interesting that I'm yelling at my parents versus them yelling at me. It's yeah. funny. My daughters have done the same thing with my mom. They're like, what are you doing, Mama Becky? You have to stop going out. And she's like, hi, I need a new shirt. I'm, and I'm like, mom, do you, where, where are you going? You're not going to church. You're not going anywhere. You don't need a new shirt. <laughs> but people will do what they're going to do. It's, it's just interesting. It's, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm really excited for it to be over. I really want to get a haircut. I want to get my nails done. I just... <laughs> I want to feel like a girl again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good, though. Yeah, makeup and filters. Yeah. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> and bubbles. <laughs> no filters. A big background, but it's no filter. Oh, I have a filter on. Oh, do you? That makes it look like you have makeup on. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Really? I want this filter. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that the make, make me look makeup. better button? I did press the make me look better button. Is it that button? Wow. Oh. There is a make me look better button. Did y'all know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, if you go to your settings and you go to video, it says oh, touch up my appearance. appearance. That's what it is. Touch up my appearance. I do have that. Well, now I'm in San Francisco. I'm from the Bay Area. <laughs> I did not find that filter, but I found a background. That's where I'm from. Anyway, well, you went so. to the virtual. You did the vir Go to the video. Go to where's this video, Caroline? Do you see where it says video? I see a stop video. Oh, right now. I was stop video. Under settings, it's general video, audio. Do you see all oh. those? You know what? I'm on my iPad, so I don't think oh, I get all yeah, the Don't play with it right now. We're going to lose yeah, you. Yeah, I don't get all the goodies. Stay in San Francisco, though. That's cool. <laughs> I'll be in the city. You know, I have a question for Joey. What is your app? Why am I blanking on your app? I feel like uh, a bad so person here. Oh, no, no. The app is called uh, the Epicenter app. I, could put I have the, not uh, downloaded this. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's been kind of under development now for the past year or so. There's uh, a, like a, a basic version of it that I actually learned to build that in Taiwan last year. When I was working abroad, I had a, a bad life-threatening reaction uh, after miscommunication, so mistranslation. Um, and that kind of sparked the, the idea to really build out something that could help people travel more safely. And then it just evolved into trying to work in all of these other components, like the emergency help, the uh, EpiPen, uh, all the key reminder, um, and then the community parts as well. I'm gonna go check, I can download it now though, right? You're in beta or? Yeah, the, uh, the beta version's available. And then uh, hopefully the full version within a week or two here. They're, we're we're really close. We uh, I was saying that the company that I was working for in Taiwan is the one that ended up investing in developing the the full version of it. And theirs looks already about a hundred times cleaner, smoother than than what I was able to. Like my my version was self taught. I started learning because uh -huh. I wanted to just get something out there that could help people. But they're going to do it um, with just that like that that higher quality. Nice. You're going to let us all know and have a big splashy launch with bubbles? Of course. Yeah, I, I, I'm really excited. That's, uh, I think it'll be soon, so I can't wait. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, 
Yeah, hopefully it can help a lot. And we'll have the um, uh, physical, like hardware coming out as well. That, that should be within the next week as well. So that's a, a component that we're designing to attach to EpiPen or AlviQ. And then we're gonna add more as we, as we go. But um, it uses Bluetooth to connect with our, our app. And then if you leave it behind, it sends you a reminder. I know that for still, to, I'm, that's one of my, my weak spots. I, I have trouble remembering to, to bring it with me all the time, the other injector. So that was one of the, one of the big ideas that I thought that we could really help people with. Um, and so that's gonna be one of, the, one of the elements of the app as well. Cool, that's awesome. Thanks. Did we lose Caroline? Where'd she go? We did. She I guess she didn't like San Francisco. <laughs> She's like, She's like this. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, y'all, this has been fun. It has, and I actually have to jump off because I have a call at two and I need to manage whatever the noise is going on out there. But um, <laughs> it was so good seeing all your faces. Too. We need to meet and greet more often. So I miss, as you guys, I just miss people and I love all of you. And Joey, so nice to get to know you. I'm sure I'll love you too very soon. Yeah, you too as well. <laughs> very nice to meet you guys. Yeah, I'm excited to check out your app. Great. Yeah, thank you. Was we'll, we'll any any feedback, anything like that that you might have. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. Gets down to four. Then okay. four. Did we have any questions? I don't think I saw any. Okay. No. Um, I have here. Oh, nope. That has nothing to do with us. That's a whole different message. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. No, we haven't had any questions because I don't think we had everybody that was on was on. Okay. So, and I don't have anything. I have no questions from Facebook. So, okay. um, I will upload this recording. I'll figure out how to do that. I don't know how to do that yet, guys. But I'll figure out how to upload the recording, and then everybody can upload it to their sites, and we'll tag everybody, and especially your app because I'm super duper excited about that. Awesome. Oh, perfect. And um, this is good because I'll be I'll be finished by the time my groceries get here. I just I turned my video off to yell at my daughter. I said, "Let the groceries in when they come." <laughs> <laughs> now I can let them in. But this, yeah, this is great, and I can't wait to try. Those Rice Krispies look amazing. They, they are look really good. They yeah. are really good. Yeah, the the daughter liked them, so that's the main thing, right? Right. Kids, and, kids like them. Yeah, and my kids liked everything on the spread, so it was, it was good. It was we had it for dinner um saturday night before easter so we were cooking all day saturday so today i just had to kind of reheat and cut up some fresh avocado because you know you don't want old avocado in your salad that's gross mm -hmm. um but the cupcakes are still delicious and it's monday and i didn't cover them or anything they just been sitting out because we don't have bugs up here so we don't, you know, north carolina knows what i'm talking about yeah <laughs> we don't have bugs so i can just leave things out we leave our butter out we leave everything out yeah, well, I don't do that. <laughs> no, when I was in South Florida, I had to cover everything. It was weird moving to Colorado and um, everybody you had to go into people's homes and things would be out. I'm like, what? You know, we put everything in Ziplocs or Tupperwares or something. And now it's like, I don't do any of that. It's lovely. Yeah, it just so depends great. on the season here in Louisville. It depends, yeah. but most everything ends up getting, you know, put up because of the bugs. Yeah. Carolyn's internet died. She just texted me to let me know. Oh, okay. Well, tell her thanks for joining us. And um, thank you all. This was a blast. It was a lot of fun. And um, we'll do something again in the future, gals and guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really great meeting everybody. And you too. Face -to -face yeah. someone. Okay. Some people I've worked, I've, you know, I know I've uh, seen the Allertech stuff online as well and interacted that way. So it's really cool to put people's faces mm. with everything. Yeah. Allertech or AssureTech? No, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, all good. All good. All right, everybody. We will stay in touch. Mwah. Thank you for everything. You guys are awesome and fabulous. And um, we'll just post this stuff everywhere. Perfect. <laughs> people will learn something and have fun laughing with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Take care. Bye, everybody. guys. Bye. 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 Bye.